Hey guys, it's Penguin here, and welcome back to another gold making video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about a handful of markets that I highly recommend checking out on your server for a possible investment in Dragonflight. Now, everything on this list is expected to go up in value by the time Dragonflight comes out, and of course, as time goes on, but I did make sure to include a variety. So if you are somebody who has a smaller portion of gold, I'm making sure I can incorporate some of the cheaper investments as well as some of those bigger investments for the bigger goblins out there. So despite wherever you are in your gold making journey, hopefully one of these investments will be good for you. But without further ado, I hope this video is helpful. Feel free to leave a like and possibly subscribe if you want to see more. And here's the first item. And so the first items that I want to talk about is actually two separate markets, but for the same exact reason with a little slight difference. And this is archetype pets as well as lattices. Now, if you're unfamiliar with these items, this comes from the protoform synthesis in 9.2. Basically, you can collect some world drop materials plus lattices and create either special mounts or special pets for your collection. And so that is where this stockpiling occurs. You know, right now 9.2 is current content, so there is a lot of volume of these materials as well as end products, the pets. And so whenever Dragonflight releases, 9.2 Xerath Mortis is no longer current content. There will be a lot less people going after these items. However, there will still be a demand for all of the collectors coming back to the game. And so the first thing I want to talk about is the actual lattices. Now, the lattices are used as a material to craft the pets as well as mounts. And based on what they are used for, they have a various price range. Sometimes on my server, I can get lattices for as cheap as five gold apiece, and the more expensive ones are about 16,000 gold. Now, the best in the perks of this item is that they are so cheap. Now, they stack to 20, so you can buy out pretty much a good bit, and if they're only, you know, like 50 gold apiece, you can buy a ton. Now, not only does cheap make this nice for actually stockpiling, it makes your risk a little less scary. Because, let's say you only invest about 10k into lattices, you will be able to buy a ton, and at the end of the day, if it doesn't work out, you only lost 10k. So, it will be okay. And so yeah, another big perk, the reason behind the lattices, is because some people are achievement hunters. So the protoform synthesis is tied to achievements, so some people will want to actually do the process themselves in order to get that achievement, not just the final product. Now, one downside of the lattices instead of the pets is that we are getting a region-wide auction house. Now, the region-wide auction house, everything that is stackable is going to be region-wide. Now, as I said before, lattices stack till 20, which means they will eventually be region-wide, which could affect prices as well as, you know, supply and demand and just the overall price of everything in the investment. So, who knows, I mean, at the end of the day, at the end of the expansion, there will be less people in Xerath Mortis, so overall, the region supply should go down, but, you know, the region-wide can make it a little bit interesting. So, if the region-wide, the auction house change scares you, or maybe you already bought some and you want something else, you can actually focus on the prototype pets, which are called the archetype of, and then whatever the pet name is. Now, the perks of actually selling the pets is that you can be flipping them currently. So the overall goal of this video is to invest buy cheap now to sell high later, but you can do this on a cross-realm basis right now with pets. If you guys aren't familiar with pet flipping, you buy cheap pets on one server, then you go and cage it on another server and make some profit. So you can utilize this method with these pets. So let's say on your server you were able to score a few cheap of the archetype pets, you can go and sell them on a different server, worst comes to worst they don't sell, and you're stockpiled for Dragonflight. In the past week I have sold two of these pets, basically doubling my money for both of them. I sold one for 24 gold, sorry 24,000 gold, which I bought for 10k, 
and I sold one for 15,000 gold, which I bought for 8,000 gold. So that is the cross realm trading, but of course you can just stockpile them in your guild bank, leave them alone for a bit, you know, in a few months, grab them out and sell them on your same server for some more gold. And so getting away from pets, we now have strange goop. Now this item is probably pretty familiar if you guys are a mount collector, and this is for the Deep Star Jellyfish Mount. Now to those who have never heard of this item before, you actually have to fish for it. And that is why it is so rare. Currently, the average amount of times you have to cast for this single item is anywhere between 1,000 to 1,500 cast in order to get one strange goop. So that is a lot of time investment. If you guys looked at Strange Goop at the start of 9.2, this item was selling for 400,000 plus gold, and currently nowadays, the high end is about 90k, and on some servers, you can buy these for 27k. The reason is, is because people have purchased those mounts, you know, less actual demand, and there is more supply. Now, of course, the supply comes from people actually fishing, and honestly, it also comes from bots. It is the very similar process that happened with BFA mounts back at the end of BFA, where bots chose that farm to get a ton of cheap mounts, which you could stockpile for the future. The same thing with this strange goop. So if you're on one of those bigger servers like Illidan or Area 52, there are a ton of goop on your server for under 30,000 gold. Like I said, at the start of expansion, they were selling for 400,000 each, and they will likely sell for almost around that same price or for at least more than 30,000 gold when Dragonflight is out. If anybody, you know, missed their chance on this mount or they didn't play in Shadowlands and they want a really cool jellyfish, they are going to have to pay up because nobody is going to want to cast 1,500 times for the strange goop. And moving on, our third category, which is going to be broken down into four subcategories, is transmog. Now, all of these will have a range of different prices, but feel free to listen to all of them and choose which one's right for you. So to get started, we are going to start with the older stuff. So if you guys stockpiled for 9.2, you have probably already heard of this, and these are all of the Corthia cosmetic shoulders. Now, because this is Corthia gear, it is already pretty expensive. People have already been resetting this and buying and stockpiling these since Corthia was ending in 9.1, so it is pretty much a old market. However, every once in a while there is a player playing in Corthia, they may drop one of these cosmetics, not know the price, and throw it up cheap on your server. So I will leave a picture on screen about all of these Corthia shoulders, as well as a TSM group that you can download in order to just run a quick shopping scan and see if any are available on your server. But Corthia Transmog, they're already pretty expensive and they should get even more expensive in Dragonflight. Moving on, we have the World Drop Weapons. Now all of these are item level 190 or 191, and these just come from various areas but they all have unique appearances. Now, very similar to Corthia stuff, these have been in the game for a while, and actually, because they've been in the game and they're pretty easy to get, they are relatively cheap. I've been able to buy up some of these weapons for 1,000 gold to about 5,000 gold apiece, and I've been able to stockpile maybe three to five of each. I just throw them all in a guild bank, and I'm going to wait until Dragonflight to throw them back on the auction house. This market is definitely the best for somebody who has a little bit less gold, or you just don't want to invest a ton. Moving on, we have two Xerath Mortis areas, and the first one is capes. Now these capes specifically come from the Xerath Mortis Paragon chest, and they used to be very expensive. If you guys don't know, right when Xerath Mortis released and people started getting those Paragon chests after getting exalted, these capes sold for almost like 100 to 400k a piece. The reason is, is that they are in unique appearance that you can only get from this Paragon chest. Now, all of these are capes, which makes it very, very easy, but they are relatively cheap nowadays. 
because Xerath Mortis is current content, lots of people are still farming for various different achievements and rewards, there are a lot of capes on the auction house and prices are getting cheaper and cheaper. So right now, this is a perfect time to buy up some of these capes, stockpile them for a later date. At the start of Xerath Mortis, one of the capes that I sold for 150k is currently on my auction house for 10k, and I actually bought both of them. You know that's a 20k investment, and as long as it even goes up maybe 10 or 20k in Dragonflight on the low end, that is still doubling my money. And the last market I want to talk about is Xerath Mortis Weapons. Now there are only about four or five of these weapons and they truly range in price. Now all of these are just world drops in Xerath Mortis, but they do have a very big range in price. For example, one of the guillotine weapons sell for almost 200k, while another one only sells for about 15k or less. So definitely, you know, see what can be found on your server and see what a good price is. But yet again, I recommend these as they are in unique appearance, and right now they are super cheap, or the cheapest they probably will ever be, because everybody is actively doing that Serith Mortis content. But yeah, everybody, that is, you know, six to seven different types of items that you can be looking out for as Shadowlands comes to a close. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope at least one of these markets you can start stockpiling in and make a big return in Dragonflight. As always, if you have any additional suggestions out there for anything regarding stockpiling for Dragonflight, or if you want to share exactly what you are personally stockpiling, feel free to let me know. I love seeing your mindset around everything and exactly what you are personally doing for Dragonflight. But as always, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Join the Discord if you want to be a part of our amazing community, that is the best place to contact me, and as always, have a good day.